Welcome, welcome to my Tuesday live stream again. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be doing, oh, I'm sorry, making sure that I can read the comments. Uh, today we're going to be making homemade butterbeer and I'm going to be do, teaching two different ways. One we're going to be doing is custard based where you uh, cook the eggs and use eggs and egg yolks to give it a richer, creamier flavor. Um, and the other one is an eggless, super quick and easy way. Both versions work just fine. So it's kind of your own preference. So let's go ahead and make sure that I'm seeing comments and then we can get started. So if you are watching on uh, YouTube or on Facebook, go ahead and leave me a comment letting me know if everything's working okay, sound, audio, visual, <laughs> so that I know it's working. Um, all right. Margaret, hello, welcome. Lindsay, hi. Okay, so the, actually I'm gonna make this a little bit out of order. Two of the main ingredients that give both of these ice creams, because basically they're both just vanilla ice creams with flavoring. The two main components of this is my uh, butterbeer butterscotch sauce and uh, a reduction in the, uh, from the soda. And because it takes time to run an ice cream maker through, we're actually start by making the ice creams. And while they're running in the ice cream makers, uh, then I'm going to uh, show you again, because I've done this before, but show you again how I make my uh, butterbeer sauce is the base that flavors everything. So a little bit out of order, but it, <laughs> I figured it would be a little bit easier in the live stream than having to try to come up with something to do while the ice cream maker is running. And then, of course, I have finished ice cream as well. All right. So. We're going to start with the custard-based ice cream first. Um, so in a pan, I forgot, I turned that on already, <laughs> it was warm. We're gonna start by heating up our liquids. Uh, I'm using half milk and half heavy whipping cream. Margaret, thanks for letting me know, I appreciate that. All right, of course, I like to scrape all the good stuff out. And we want to bring this to a simmer. Give this a little stir to make sure those two components come together. And this should just take a couple minutes for the milk and the whipping cream to come to a simmer. Obviously they're cold, I just pulled them out of the fridge. But um, anyway, and then while those are coming up to heat, put that aside a little bit. Ooh, we're also, uh, I'm gonna be working on the eggs. So here in this bowl, we're gonna take our egg and egg yolks. The more egg yolks you use, the richer it is, the more eggs you use, you'll still get a good custard base, but it won't be quite as rich. So for my, my normal traditional vanilla bean ice cream, I use six egg yolks. Now you can swap that out for three eggs because egg yolk and egg white are about the same. Not quite exactly, but good at close enough for this. So you can use three eggs for this. You can use six yolks. What you don't want to use is use all whites. Now I recommend being heavier on the yolks than the full eggs. So uh, I made a batch yesterday where I used uh, four egg yolks and one egg. And remember that one whole egg counts for two parts. So that's still the six parts. You can go six full yolks if you want, but because I was making three batches of this, I didn't want to end up with 18 egg whites. I mean, I have plenty I could do with 18 egg whites. It's just a lot. It would take me some time to get through it. So I went with the um, four yolks, one egg, and then in another batch that I made uh, this morning for, for our custard, I did two eggs and two yolks, and that uh, that will work just fine as well. I did notice as I was cooking the custard that it wasn't quite um, as thick at the end, but it still tasted amazing. So if you uh, are wanting to use less egg or not, if you're wanting to have less leftover egg whites, then that's the lowest ratio I would recommend. Two eggs, two yolks. Today I'm doing, for this example right here, I'm doing one egg, four yolks. So hopefully that made sense. All right. So next we're gonna add sugar and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're going to whisk this together. Now at the beginning, when you first start whisking, it looks really uh, grainy and not really put together and this really vibrant yellow. And as you whisk it together, you wanna do this quickly and fast 
you'll notice it will start to lighten in color, become a little bit more pastel, and the sugar and egg whites come together and they become a lot more cohesive. Um, I recommend holding it here versus trying to do it on the counter. You'll get, I don't know, for some reason I just find it easier at this angle uh, when I'm whisking really hard and really fast. Like if I was making my own uh, whipped cream without a hand blender, this is how I would do it. Everything shakes. <laughs> All right, and so now, What just happened? Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Let's try that again. Push the wrong button. All right, so now you can see just how light and thick this is. And the sugar has dissolved in the eggs and it's not grainy anymore. And this is what we call ribbony. See how it's holding those whisk lines for a moment before it goes flat again? So it's light in color, it's not as grainy, it's really cohesive, um, and it's nice and thick. So we actually made a custard last week when we made the creme anglaise, same basic principle. So we're going once we get the milk and cream heated up, we're going to temper the eggs with the hot liquid. And how we do that, hold on, just testing. Oh, it's almost ready, okay. So how you do that is we're going to, I'm gonna be whisking the egg with one hand and pouring the hot liquid in the other. And you want to be careful, you don't just wanna pour all the hot liquid into the eggs because that hot, hot, hot liquid would make the eggs cook immediately and you would actually end up with a sweet, <laughs> a sweet scrambled egg, which is not what we're looking to do. So you want to be whisking constantly while you're adding the liquid in a thin stream a little bit at a time. And what that will do is introduce the heat to the eggs and heat up the eggs slowly and carefully and allow this to cook into a custard versus do that. So because I only have two hands, one for mixing, one for pouring, I want, and I don't want my bowl to be moving around, my trick is to take a paper towel, get it wet and squeeze it out, and I place that under my bowl, and the, the moisture from the towel will actually hold the bowl um, in place so that I can whisk and pour at the same time without uh, everything having problems. Also, typically I would pour with my left hand and stir with my right, but because my camera is over here on this side, I'm gonna be whisking with my left hand and pouring with my right, so my whisking won't be quite as fast, and so it's another reason I want the bowl to hold still, because if I was whisking and the bowl was turning, it would be kind of a hot mess. So, this looks good. You probably can't see this, but we're starting to develop just a little bit of skin on top here, and we're seeing little itty bitty bubbles, so I know it's ready to go, so. So let's pour just a little bit at a time. Some pans are easier to pour than others. This one's not a great pourer. Frustrates me to no end. Now you don't have to pour all of the liquid in, because we're gonna be pouring it back into the pan anyway. All right, so I'm going to, you just want all of the eggs incorporated. Whoop, sorry, I'm trying to get that damp <laughs> paper towel so I can wipe off this spilled excess. All right, so now what we're going to do is actually bring this back in to frame. And uh, we're going to now pour our egg mixture, our nicely warmed egg mixture, into the pan. And continue to stir. and continue to cook this until it gets nice and thick. Now at this point, I just use a spatula, not a whisk, because I'm not trying to incorporate a lot of air into this. Uh, and so I'm gonna stop with the whisking now and just stick with the spatula. 
Uh, Paula, hello. Rhonda, hi. Cassie, I am doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Sandy, good evening. Hello from Wichita. Uh, Lindsay, that's great advice. Oh, I'm so glad that something made sense there. Broke Baker, hello. Welcome, welcome. Sherry, hi. Quilting Queen 3, hello from Arizona. Oh man, how hot is it there now? I used to live in Arizona and I do not miss summer there. That is for sure. All right, so you can see it's already getting much thicker. And because we're just stirring it and not whisking it, we're not seeing massive amounts of bubbles. What we're looking to do is to just bring this up to barely a uh, simmer. As soon as we see a bubbles, we're gonna take it off the heat. Now, notice um, there, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> Notice I'm not stopping stirring though. You want to make sure that you're continually stirring, especially in like a stainless steel pan. I like to use this ceramic pan. I feel like I get a really nice non-stick without worrying about black flecks in my, um, in my mixture. And I also don't worry about it burning too badly on the bottom, but I can definitely feel it as I'm stirring it. So I just, I just don't walk away. I just keep it constantly stirring, not vigorous or anything like that. Just uh, keeping it going. Now in the meantime, while this is finishing up and coming up to the custard temperature that I am looking for, I'm going to prepare an ice bath. Now if you don't need to make ice cream anytime soon, uh, you can just let this cool and put it in the fridge and let it chill completely overnight. But what you don't want to do is add it to your ice cream maker until it has completely chilled. So an ice bath is actually a nice quick way of cooling this down. Um, really quickly and then I'm still gonna put it in the fridge it's still not gonna get totally cold but I'm gonna put it in the fridge and then it won't take as long if I did this in the morning which I did this morning <laughs> I made a batch of this um, I did the ice pack really ice pack really quickly it chilled really fast which is actually really good for stuff like this when it when you put it in the fridge and it's super warm oop, there we go see how it's starting to bubble oh take it off Hold on, getting my trivet. <laughs> if you put it in the fridge while it's really warm like this, um, it actually will heat up other fridge items, which you don't want. Also, it will um, it will take so long to cool. It, it it's just not a it's just not great. So if you can do an ice bath. Um, you'll, it, it's much, 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 much better. Okay. Um, so I have, uh, let's see, other angle. So I have a bowl inside another bowl and there's ice in between. Now don't use glass because it will crack when the heat touches it. Oh, oh no, I forgot to strain it. Where's my strainer? Ah. Okay. <laughs> You want to strain this so that if there is any like eggy curdy pieces in your custard, it won't get into your final product. It's a texture thing. All right. I'll pour all that in. And you just want to be scraping this so that none of that ch really big chunky stuff gets in there. Sometimes there's really not much of anything to strain out and sometimes there's a lot. So, And then stir this and this will, ooh, hot. Oh, that splashed. And this will help this cool down uh, nice and quickly. And when we put it in the fridge, it will already be slightly chilled and we won't have to worry about the hot, hot, hot steam uh, affecting any of the cold food in your fridge. So, um, Adrian, so far this is a custard. So we have water, cream, eggs, sugar, and a little bit of salt. So this is a great plain vanilla base um, for any ice cream. Now what we're going to do to make this 
butterbeer. Now, if I was making this vanilla, I would have steeped vanilla beans like we did last week for the creme anglaise sauce. I would have steeped vanilla beans in the liquid, the hot milk and cream. Uh, if you're making uh, this chocolate, this is the stage where I would add some melted chocolate to this. Um, if you were making peanut butter ice cream, you'd add peanut butter here, stuff like that. They're all a little bit different, but this is just a great base recipe. So what I'm going to do next is add the components of this that's going to make this butter beer. So I have, um, so my butterscotch sauce or my caramel sauce is the base for my butter beer recipe, except for the fact that I also add a little bit of vinegar to kind of um, take away, cut the sweetness and give it just a slightly different tang to it. And then I also use um, rum extract to bring out that, um, that butterbeer flavoring. And then I also add a little bit of salt. So that's how it differs from my traditional butterscotch. Also, I use all dark brown sugar for my butterbeer sauce versus um, light brown sugar that I typically use. And then of course, white sugar for caramel dark sugar for butterscotch. That's only, the only difference between caramel and butterscotch. So uh, I pre-made this already and I'm going to make some more while the ice creams are running. Um, but so now we want to add this to our sauce. Now I made this batch um, yesterday when I was pre-making the ice cream, but uh, I left it in the fridge overnight. And then when I was preparing for this, I just took it out of the fridge so that it could come back to room temperature and be easier to pour and easier to incorporate because if this was still chilled in the fridge, it would be really thick and it would be hard to incorporate in this, um, in this ice cream. All right, so the next component is typically when you're making your own homemade butter beer, you're using uh, cream soda as a base. So um, I was trying to think of how to get that flavor in, but I'm like, if I mix cream soda into this ice cream, while it will bring out some of that flavor that we're looking for, it also will water this beautiful custard that I just made down, and I don't want to do that. And then I remembered my 7-Up cake, the one shaped, you know, like a 7-Up bottle, um, that I made years ago. And in to flavor the 7-Up mousse and the 7-Up frosting, uh, I made a 7-Up syrup, and I did that by taking this 2-liter bottle and boiling it down until to a reduction until it was about a I did uh, about a cup and a half. So I did that yesterday. I took one of these and it took about an hour and a half on medium, medium high. So just a nice slow simmer, stirring occasionally. Um, and I got this nice thick, it's really dark syrup. And that's what we're gonna add for the flavoring. Now for my first sample batch, I ended up using about half a cup of the butterscotch, butterbeer butterscotch syrup and half a cup of the cream soda flavoring. And the end result, it was just really cream soda-y. So uh, doing some experimenting, I actually cut this down to three tablespoons. It's a very small amount. So if you don't wanna take the time and you don't wanna be bothered with reducing the cream soda, it's just fine. It'll still be delicious. It'll still take like that butterbeer butterscotch flavor it will be delicious, you'll love it. Um, but if you do take the time, it is amazing. Now you can do a whole two liter bottle like I did, or of course you can do a smaller amount. If you're just looking to get the three tablespoon used for this recipe, I would start with a cup and a half of soda. Um, use a very small pot because obviously starting to get down to really low liquids like that, it will cause a problem. Um, and just reduce it as much as you can without obviously burning the bottom of the pan. But yeah, nice itty bitty small saucepan will do the job, so. I'm gonna add this. There we go. And stir this all together. Now, if you've overcooked your custard slightly and it kind of looks a little bit grainy like this, it's not a big deal at all. I'm just going to, like I said, as soon as it started boiling, I took it off the heat and I, I should have immediately added it to the chill bowl, but I was talking and giving instructions, so it overcooked just slightly. Not a big deal. Um, you can just whisk it really hard. You can use a um, hand blender, um, and I'm gonna use, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my immersion blender really quickly, and it will just smooth right out. <laughs>
creamy that is now. Super, super quick and easy to do. So I would just keep stirring this occasionally for a couple of minutes until it's chilled enough that I can put it in the fridge. Okay, that's still a little bit warm. Oh, but it tastes so good. All right, so I'm gonna leave this back here. And uh, bring over the ice cream maker. We are going to get the custard that I already made and get that started. I made this custard earlier today and this is for one and a half quart machines the size of this recipe so anytime you're making ice cream for this size you're looking for about four cups of liquid in your final product if you have a larger ice cream machine you're going to want to know your size so you can scale up or down based on that so i have my frozen freezer bowl i want to put it together and you want to get it started before you pour the mixture in because the mixture, as soon as it hits those frozen sides of the bowl, is going to start to crystallize. And the scraping motion, what this inner thing does is it scrapes constantly the inside of the bowl against the wall. And so it's constantly scraping away the liquid that's crystallizing against the outside of the bowl. Whether you're using this type of ice cream maker or using one that uses ice and rock salts, this principle is the same that frozen outside is crystallizing. You're scraping it and mixing back in so that new fresh liquid can touch the walls, crystallize, get mixed and scraped back in. And that's what's create, that's what the chemistry is that is creating the texture that we're looking for in ice cream. So, oh, where did my, oh. I'll leave that spatula there and I'll get a fresh one out. I was like, where's my spatula? Duh. All right, so you can see just how thick this has gotten as it's cooled in the fridge, All right? So it's nice and chilled. Give it a quick stir and turn this on and pour in. work on the next one. Okay, here you go. Thank you, baby. All right, set a timer for uh, 35. 35. Yeah. Okay, so over here, I don't know if you can see, but I have my, I bought myself a soft serve ice cream machine. It's uh, similar to the one I was just using, but it has a hole at the bottom that you can squeeze out. And so for this other version, I thought it would be perfect to use in my um, soft serve ice cream machine. So that's what we're going to do. But just to preface this, this quick and easy version that doesn't have any eggs and doesn't have any cooking time at all, um, you can actually use in a normal ice cream machine as well. It will, it will crystallize, it will get thick, it will get big, it will get full. The end result is all that will change. Now, either one, the custard-based and the eggless-based, if you eat them fresh, they'll be like soft serve. Uh, if you take either of them, put them in a container and put them in the freezer for four to 
four plus hours, they will both get hard and will be scoopable ice cream. So soft serve or scoopable, it's the same recipes. One is just has a richer flavor with a custard and the eggs, and one is just a lot faster and super easy to make. So it's a personal preference, but I don't recommend putting the custard based in the soft serve ice cream machine just because I simply haven't tested it. I've only ever used my quick versions in here. So let's get started with the quick one. All right. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. I'm not talking to you. All right, the only negative to Alexa, right? All right. Oh, oh, I just spilled everywhere. Okay. I pre-measure out all of my liquids, but I always keep plastic on them. And so it's always fun to take all the plastic off. Super fun spilling milk everywhere. Okay. So because this one doesn't have the custard base or the eggs, what you end up doing is actually using more, uh, a more balance towards the heavy whipping cream side. So instead of being half and half, half milk, half whipping cream, this is one third milk, uh, two thirds heavy whipping cream. So this is uh, my heavy whipping cream and it's in a four cup bowl. This is just good, perfect. Because again, like I said, we want four cups of liquid for this. So I'm just gonna mix it right here in this. So I have two cups of heavy whipping cream, one cup of milk. We have the sugar. And this is the base for quick and easy ice cream. Don't cry or spill that. Thanks, Hillary. All right. So we just want that sugar to slightly dissolve. And did you know, I was actually, what was I doing the other day? I was, I was working, I was recipe testing something and I needed to cook a sugar syrup. I don't remember if I was making caramel or what I was making. Anyway, um, I was prepping for it and because I wasn't filming it, it was just recipe testing. I put the sugar in the water and I let it sit on the stove while I was working on something else just so it was ready to go to boil. And by the time I was ready to move on to that part of the recipe and I was ready to boil it, the sugar had already completely dissolved in liquid. So sugar can dissolve in liquid without boiling and that's what we're going for here. If the sugar doesn't dissolve completely, you could get a slightly grainy texture to your ice cream. And again, we're not heating or cooking this at all. So you wanna give that a couple minutes typically. All right, so now this is all stirred together. And one of the ways that you can do it, again, keep your hands clean. You can just grab a little bit and rub your fingers together. And if you're not feeling any graininess, right, you wanna be fresh after stirring. Cause obviously if there is sugar in there, it will fall to the bottom. So you wanna stir it really fast. So you're mixing everything up and then touch it and grab it and feel for any graininess. Um, if you're still feeling a little bit of graininess, just whisk it for a little bit longer. Okay. So the rest of this is the same. We are taking my uh, butterbeer sauce and adding that. And because you wanna make sure you're putting a chilled mixture into your, um, into your ice cream maker, you can make this and then chill it in the fridge if, you have, if your sauce is at all warm. Like I said, I made this sauce the day before, chilled it in the fridge overnight, and then I, um, I let it sit at room temperature while I was prepping for this video. So then again, same thing. I'm also going to use my um, reduction from my cream soda. Ooh, I don't know if you can see at the bottom where all the, this is settled. And you just want to whisk it until it's completely incorporated. Now, if you have your hand, your um, handy hand blender, if you have your hand blender handy, <laughs> a lot of the word hand in there, you can just throw that in here too and hand blend it really quickly. You want to make sure that you don't hand blend it for too long because that can actually, with the cream in there, that could actually like start to thicken it a little bit too much. So you would just want to do it just long enough that it's incorporated. But usually 
it just takes a couple of seconds and it's ready to go. If you're taking your uh, butterbeer sauce directly from the fridge and it's cold, you're gonna wanna heat it slightly in the microwave so that it can get mixed into the mixture, but then it might bring up the temperature a little bit and you might wanna throw this mixture in the fridge for like 30 minutes just to make sure it's really, really nice and chilled. But mine is chilled enough, I can just put it directly into the machine. So let's bring this one over. Plug this in. Now this one works a little bit differently. The other one, um, it moves the bowl and the head stays in place. Where in this one, uh, there's a little thing right here that gets twisted and it ends up twisting this. The bowl stays in place and this gets twisted. So it's a little bit different. Now one thing that you do want to make sure of with this machine, hold on, oops, pull that up. You wanna make sure that you have um, checked to make sure that it's closed and that everything is in place. Because if this is out of place, it's just a hole and your ice cream's gonna fall right through. So I'm gonna make sure this is locked into place. Uh, and you also want to make sure that this isn't open, right? Because if this is open, that's the star shape that you get when you squeeze out. Um, that will also cause a problem, so make sure that that's closed. Just a couple things to check before you get started. Okay, you also want to make sure that you have had your freezer bowls. Um, in the freezer for at least 20 hours before you get started. Lock that into place. All right. Make sure everything is working. I just remembered that I love this one because it's the numbers are, are built right into the cup but it's a terrible pour so <laughs> like in the beginning it just pours makes a huge mess Just do small amounts at a time. I so get that in a little bit better. Because while I don't mind if it spills all over my counter, I definitely do not want it spilling all over the machine. All right, so I actually bought this with the intention of making uh, butterbeer ice cream. Because if you've been to Universal Studios, they have the ice cream shop. And while they have firm ice cream, so you can see how liquid it is and how low it is right now. So while they have firm ice cream at the ice cream shop, the butterbeer ice cream itself is soft serve and I wanted to recreate it. So I actually bought this soft serve ice cream machine three years ago. And I've only made soft serve once. <laughs> but, hold on. Move this out of the way. Um, mostly because it's kind of big. It's kind of big and awkward. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I have a place where it goes, but then I never get it out where the other one is so much smaller and easier. So, but the kids really enjoy it. It's fun having the cones there and doing the squeeze thing. So I need to do it more often. Plus my daughter wants to make Dole Whip. So that will be our next project. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we are going to, while those two things are cooking, Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. While those two things are cooking, we're going to make the sauce. Sorry, this is my new favorite pan, so I wanted to wash it real fast and use it. I had a friend who recommended these pans to me, and I have just totally fallen in love with them. Okay. Is that too loud? Like, it's quieter than the other one, but if it's really annoying, I can uh, move it to the other room. Just let me know. Um, anyway, it's 106 in Mesa right now. Oh! That sounds horrible. I'm so sorry. Uh, Peggy, good evening. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so, like I mentioned before, one of the flavors that goes into this ice cream is cream soda reduced. Again, I just put it in this pan and I just let it cook over medium high for about an hour and a half. And I just checked on it like every 20 minutes, gave it a quick stir um, and until it was reduced to the point that I was happy with it. So for this, uh, for two liters, I reduced it down to one and a half cups. If you're going to do less than that, obviously go by ratio. Again, if you're trying to just get that three tablespoon amount, quarter cup amount that we put into this, three to four tablespoons, I'd start with one and a half cups in a really small pan. Um, so and then the other component that we've mentioned already is the butterbeer sauce. So caramel sauce and butterscotch sauce are almost the exact same recipe. The only difference is caramel sauce is made with white sugar, butterscotch is made with brown sugar. Um, so to turn this from butterscotch into a butter beer, I do dark brown sugar, and the ingredients over, um, instead of light brown sugar, and that gives it just a slightly different depth. Also, um, and then at the end, I add a little bit of salt to cut the sweetness, a little bit of vinegar to cut the sweetness and kind of give it a little bit of a bite. And then I add some rum extract. So to get this sauce started, just like a butterscotch or caramel sauce, we have the butter, we have brown sugar, and this is dark brown sugar. And we have um, corn syrup. Now, corn syrup that you get at the grocery store is not the same as high fructose corn syrup that freaks everyone out. Um, corn syrup has its purposes, and the reason that I use it in all my candy making, marshmallows, caramels, fudges, stuff like that, is that it helps uh, it it helps prevent uh, gran granular helps prevent the sugar from getting too grainy. It gives you a smoother final sauce. It also gives shine and strength and helps the ingredients hold cohesively together. So that is why I recommend it, but of course you can leave it out if you want. But that's what it does. I feel it does its job really well and I highly recommend it. Get out my bigger spatula, this little weeny one. Might not be great for this, okay. And we want to stir this and melt this and cook it. Um, until it reaches 240 degrees. Now don't forget, uh, if you live at a high altitude, to adjust. So what you want to do for adjusting for high altitudes um, is you want to boil water. Now, typically water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. For me, I did this, I boiled water, I used my thermometer and I tested it. And for me, water boiled at 192, which is 100, 100, which is a 20 degree difference. So when a recipe calls for 240, I know that for me, that means 220. So uh, it's really worth getting a good thermometer. I know that thermometers are kind of like my platform. They're my thing. I have a good oven thermometer, a freezer thermometer, a fridge thermometer, a good meat thermometer, a candy thermometer, and a chocolate thermometer. So thermometers are really not that expensive and they are 100% worth it to get the best results in anything that you're making. Nobody likes overcooked meat, but nobody wants to die from undercooked meat. A good meat thermometer will give you moist, perfect meat every time. Uh, and a good candy thermometer 
will help you not have to throw away, throw away a batch of toffee because you undercooked it or overcooked it. And now obviously there are ways around it. There's the tests that you can do where you uh, put a drop of the whatever candy it is you're making in water and to see how gummy it is. And um, But it's hard to be that precise and it's also hard to get your timing right. So again, I really recommend a good thermometer. I have these type of candy thermometers are super easy and super cheap. This instant read thermometer is a little bit more expensive, but I can use it for everything. I use it for chocolate, for candy, and for meat. Um, so and I, I love it. I've converted to this one. Oh, I didn't plug it in. No wonder it's not melting. I've been unplugging and plugging in so many things. I was like, why is this not melting? It should be totally melted by now. I'm getting frustrated and flustered going, I'm going to have to just keep talking. Uh, Broke Baker, you have some great ice cream recipes. You made my strawberry, my mint, and my vanilla last week. Ooh. Broke, have, I know that you have tried my ganache, my chocolate ganache buttercream, and I know you've liked that. Have you ever tried my peanut butter ice cream? Because that one is so good. Or um, my toasted marshmallow ice cream. It's another good one. I've been thinking I need to remake my s'more ice cream recipe where I make half toasted marshmallow ice cream, half chocolate ice cream, and have a ribbon of my marshmallow, um, my homemade marshmallow fluff running through the center of it. So good. And then do a graham cracker crumble on top. Uh, good evening. It's okay. Thanks, Margaret. I know that it's annoying, but it's hopefully it's just a dull annoying and not like super annoying. It's hard because, let's see, the microphone should be pointing directly at me, but that doesn't mean they're not also getting some of that. I probably should put it over there because the microphones are coming from here. Let's see if that helps. Oh man, this custard sauce tastes so good. All right, so this custard is completely chilled. All right, is that quieter now? Does that help? All right, I'm gonna put some plastic wrap on top of this custard and put it in the fridge. And since we pre-chilled it in the ice bath, it should really only take It should really only take like an hour before it's ready to go, but that doesn't mean I have to make it in that hour. So I've now used both my bowls for my normal ice cream maker and this bowl. So I have to clean and wash a bowl, let it dry completely so there's no water stuck to the inside, and then refreeze it for 20 hours. So I'm actually gonna leave that custard in there for over a day before I get around to making that batch. And it's just gonna be just fine in there. Covered in plastic, I'll probably give it a stir tomorrow when I go to the fridge for something else and see it. Um, but it'll be just fine. So that's the nice thing. If you know you want to have ice cream later and you're bored, you can always pre-make it. Keep it, the mixture in the fridge. Be ready to go. Um, we've made five batches of my strawberry ice cream in the last couple weeks. It's one of my kids' summertime favorites. So um, last time I did it, I just made a, I made a double batch and we made half of it right then. Then I kept the other half in the fridge for a couple days and then we made it fresh again uh, a couple days later. So that works really well and really easily too. Um, my sister has an ice cream maker that's three times the size of mine. So we made a triple batch. That was crazy. I made so much ice cream. I think I like my small little ice cream maker um, just because it's so quick and easy. All right, this is finally starting to melt. And I have all of my other ingredients ready to go so that as soon as it hits the temperature that we're looking for, it's not gonna be close yet, but. Yeah. Uh, as soon as it's ready to go, uh, I have everything else ready for it. So I have a trivet to take it off the heat immediately and I have my heavy whipping cream 
ready to add to it. Okay. Well, let me know what you think when you do try those flavors. Um, see if any of them take the spot of the ganache ice cream recipe that I know you've shared often on social media and I know you really like that one and I appreciate the love, appreciate the shares. All right. So what we're looking for here with the hit hitting 240 degrees is that's actually the, um, the soft ball stage. So we wanted to hit the soft ball stage of candy making. And at that point we could actually pour it in molds and it would turn into like car a soft caramel. But by adding the whipping cream to it, that is what's going to bring it back to being a sauce instead. But you still, we still wanted to hit that because then we know that the sugar will be completely melted and grain free. Um, and we'll also know that it will hold its structure, right? Because if we just heated it until the sugar was melted and then added the whipping cream, the, the sauce wouldn't be that thick consistency that we're happy with for a good caramel sauce or butterscotch sauce that we're talking about. So I feel like I'm missing, okay. Making sure I have all the other ingredients to finish this off. All right, are there any questions while we're waiting for this to finish melting and heating up? We have some small summer crowds, you guys. Um, I will probably be taking a couple weeks off in July, but I will be doing a live stream again next week. So if anybody has any requests, let me know. Um, so that I can make sure to get to those. The negative of live streams in the summer is that it is already so stinking hot in here. Um, and that's without my oven being on. Just these lights are warm, and no matter how low I turn my air conditioner on, it just never quite seemed to cool the upstairs. My brother-in-law has been trying to convince me to create a filming kitchen, a fake filming kitchen, downstairs where it's cooler. But I don't know. I like that everything's here and I can grab what I need. And if I was downstairs in a fake kitchen and all of a sudden I needed an ingredient, it would be kind of a pain. All right, this is close. I can tell it's close. Almost melted. Um, so yeah, if anybody has any suggestions for next week. Uh, obviously, I think we probably don't need to do another ice cream just because this teaches a lot. Um, I was actually, as I was making this recipe and creating it and coming up with it, I was thinking my caramel cheesecake recipe is really popular. And I thought, duh, I could make a butterbeer cheesecake. So the question is, with my caramel cheesecake, I take my homemade caramel and I use that for flavoring the cheesecake itself. And then I also top the cheesecake with it uh, for extra caramel. So for a butterbeer cheesecake, obviously I would use uh, the butterbeer sauce I'm making now and the um, cream soda reduction for flavoring the cheesecake itself. But then for the topping, should I stick with this butterbeer sauce or should I make that same um, whipped cream marshmallow topping that I add to the butterbeer drinks and put that on top of the cheesecake? Because it's not because it's not actually a whipped cream, it's kind of on the soft side because it's meant to melt into the, it's meant to melt into the, um, oh, it's the word, the drinks. <laughs> um, I would have to, I think if I whipped it more and changed it slightly, I could get it to be thicker, not quite meringue, but like a thick whipped cream. Um, so yeah, so drizzle on more butterbeer sauce or um, do I just store the caramel sauce in the refrigerator? Yes, I do. Um, now, I will say I mentioned that the corn syrup keeps it from getting grainy, but if you microwave cool, microwave cool, microwave cool a lot, it will definitely get grainy again because you're not bringing it up to that same temperature and you're introducing granular stuff to it. Um, but it should stay for at least the first couple reheats really nice and smooth. Okay, this is boiling now. We hit 220 degrees. So I want to take this off the heat because I don't want it to keep cooking and get too firm. Let's turn this off and move it out of the way. Uh, Dutch baby, like German pancakes or hoot nannies. 
Uh, Tina, is that the one that you're talking about? The We call them rising eggs. I actually already have a video of, uh, of that on my YouTube channel. It's not a live video. Uh, Alexa, stop. It's not a live video, but it is, um, I do have my recipe for that. If you just search uh, German pancakes on my YouTube channel, you will find those, but um, I'm totally open to making them live as well. Uh, you want to see how to make a mirror glaze. That is a good one. I have not done that before. You don't have room in your freezer to place the bowl. Um, so you use the old ice cream maker with rock, rock salt and ice. That totally works too. I have uh, a refrigerator up here, two refrigerators in my garage. Sorry, I was just seeing if that was close. Uh, Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Um, and then a full-size freezer in my garage as well. So I know not everybody has that, so I get it. All right. Now it is time to um, stir in our cream. Now, if you pour this cream in all at once, it will curdle the sauce. The sauce will get really hard. It will, this cream and the sauce will not stir into each other. So you want to keep stirring this and pour the cream in a really really thin stream like really thin this way the the cream will cool down the hot sauce that we just made but still incorporate in i learned that mistake the hard way by just pouring it in and then starting to stir and having massive problems um, and then and once that caramel has cooled that quickly and firmed up, it just doesn't become liquid again. Then you have to like put it back on the stove and reheat it and then it gets overcooked. It's just not right. So this part is probably the most important part to making a sauce is adding this whipping cream in this really, really thin stream. And that will give you the results that you're looking for. All right. Once you get this point, you can just scrape the rest out. And we want to incorporate this cream completely. All right, and now I'm gonna add, so this right here is butterscotch sauce. Perfect butterscotch sauce right there. So we want to turn it from butterscotch sauce into butter beer. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, actually a little more than that. going to add a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and I know this sounds super super braggy but uh, for a live stream I did a live stream I want to say two years ago where my kids and I tried every single butterbeer recipe on the internet and compared it to mine and mine won hands down all right, and then this is rum extract. A little goes a long way with that. You don't want to think, oh man, whoo, that smell of that rum extract hitting that warm sauce. All right, and that is the difference between butterscotch and butterbeer sauce. Just those couple ingredients right there make all the difference. And then I use this as my base for my cold butterbeer, my warm butterbeer, my frozen butterbeer, uh, my butterbeer ice cream, um, and I'm actually looking to, I'm remaking my butterbeer fudge recipe using this as well instead of a store-bought butterscotch sauce because, yeah, and that recipe needs to be updated badly. Uh, and then I also use a twist on this for my butterbeer popcorn, which I have to say is divine. So this sauce right here is where it is at. It is so good. So, and this makes about, I'm gonna say about three cups. So I have my jar that I used for yesterday's batch. And there's a little bit left, so I didn't wanna start a whole new jar since it's just one day apart. So I just keep this in a mason jar with a lid in my fridge. And we just, we use it on everything. Uh, we make butter beer all often. <laughs> um, and then we also just will eat it on Villa ice cream. 
I like to make my chocolate cake and have this with it. mix the leftovers from yesterday's batch and today's batch together. Now, if your batches are made more than a day apart, I wouldn't mix them together just because if you've reheated one, it might start getting that grain and you don't want to introduce the graininess to a fresh sauce. But there we go. And because we're going to use this to pour over our fresh ice cream in just a minute, I'm actually going to put a ladle in here. So that is ready to go. All right, that ice, the soft serve ice cream is not quite done yet, but the other one should be almost done. So, are there any questions currently about making butterbeer sauce or butterbeer ice cream or just ice cream making general, questions in general? I make a lot of ice cream recipes, <laughs> uh, a lot. I uh, remember tomorrow, okay, I'll find it. Uh, Glenna Bay, hi, we need to have a game night soon. We have a ton of new games too, so let's set that up. Message me. Uh, Jen, hello, welcome. Yummy, it, it really is so good and so easy. This is the exact same recipe I use for my caramel sauce and my butterscotch sauce with those uh, changes that I already mentioned, so. Hey Brooklyn, how much longer? I can't hear you, come tell me. How much longer on the timer? Um, there's two minutes. Oh good, we're really close to our first ice cream being done and being able to pour it um, into the thing. So uh, the other thing is how do you store your ice cream in the freezer? I have done many, many things over the years. Uh, my previous favorite was Um, to use metal bread pans uh, and then just put plastic over the top. That works really, really well. Um, but like I said, I make a lot of ice cream. So my new favorite is actually this insulated uh, Tobolo ice cream thing. And it fits perfectly that one and, a, uh, one and a half quart. And I have four of them. And I have a bunch of different colors. Um, and they're great. They're really easy and they're easy to clean because they come apart completely so so that is what I have that ready uh, now the next question is do you just put the butterbeer ice cream in here and then later serve it with the sauce or do you want ribbons of the sauce going through your ice cream if that's the case then you want to make sure that your sauce is not fresh. Like this is fresh and warm. And if I tried to pour this into the ice cream, it would just remelt the ice cream and that would be a mess. So if this was refrigerated and chilled, then I could take it and drizzle, like pour, put half the ice cream in here, drizzle a little bit of that butterbeer sauce and then pour the rest of the ice cream in. That'd be a really good way to go about that. Um, I'm going to settle because this is fresh and warm with just adding this on top of my fresh frozen ice cream. So there's that. Uh, Sarah, there's a lot of steps involved. It depends on which one you want to make. If you're looking to make the, um, like, I don't know, this sauce took what? Six minutes, right? That's really not long at all. And then it makes three cups and you can use it for a lot of different butterbeer based recipes or just as a topping for ice cream. Uh, for the ice creams themselves, the custard based ice cream took, what, about 15 minutes to put together, like if I'm being generous. I could probably get it, if I wasn't talking and teaching, I could probably get it done in 10, and then it just needs to chill. And then of course the easy ice cream that you don't have to cook at all, that took what, two minutes to whip together? So really the only time, in, the longest time involved is making the reduction sauce. Um, but again, it, it took an hour and a half to reduce a two liter bottle to one and a half cups, and, but I didn't have to stay on it, right? Like I put it in a nonstick pan, and I checked on it every 20 minutes, but it really didn't need me to. Um, if I was gonna do it again, I could just put it in the pot, put it over medium, 
and check it an hour and a half it'd probably be just fine um, so yes it's time but it's pretty hands-off time um, so I don't know I don't think it has too much or too many um, steps but I also I don't find cooking I find it enjoyable so to me it's not hard it, it's an enjoyable thing that I do and spend time doing and I obviously I get a little bit nerdy about food and recipes and how they're made and how they come together so there's that component of this as well where I kind of nerd out and really enjoy what what the difference is between caramel and butterscotch and you know butterbeer sauces and stuff like that so you can just ignore my nerding out and go with the basics of the ingredients and it's really not very difficult in my opinion um, Donna, you just got here. Both ice creams are made and running through the machine already, and our butterbeer sauce is already made as well. So now we're just kind of waiting to um, see it all, all. We're waiting to see the final results. Is that done? Okay, you can't have it on carpet. It heats up the motor too much and then the ice cream won't stir properly. Okay. Alexa, stop. Okay, so here is our custard-based ice cream running through. Now, if I was just at home, okay, I am at home. <laughs> if I was just making this for myself and I wasn't doing a live stream and trying to get things done in a quick manner, um, I would let this run for probably another five to eight minutes. You can see that it's much taller than it was, but it's not quite where I like it to be. Um, I usually like it to have expanded just a little bit more. And while it's definitely crystallizing and thick, this is not quite as thick as I like it. Um, but it's good enough for me to put it in the container. Uh, Margaret, I got my containers on Amazon, and as soon as I get off here, I will add a link for you. Um, and just scraping it really fast to get the excess off. Okay. So you'll see what I mean as I'm pouring this about it just not being quite as thick as I like it. It's definitely ice creamy. It's definitely soft serve. I just prefer it a little bit bigger and thicker before I put it in the freezer uh, just for a creamy, uh, a creamy ice cream. But by the time, once this freezes in the freezer for four, four hours, my kids are not ice cream connoisseurs. They probably won't even be able to tell the difference at all. Hold on, it's hard using my non-dominant hand to scrape ice cream out. Just a second. The edges, the sides where the ice cream freezes always are a little bit thicker than the middle because the little scraping hand part of the ice cream, it can only do so much. There's always just a little bit left. Okay, yeah, so the batch I made this morning was actually over full, overfilled, and I couldn't, um, I couldn't actually close the lid earlier, so. All right. Close that, put that in the freezer. All right, we're going to check on my soft serve machine and see if that's ready to go yet. ready or not.
turning it so that it's hopefully facing the right direction. There we go. <sighs> okay. okay, so. All right, so you can see, oh boy. you can see how thick that's gotten. I don't think it's quite thick enough for squeezing out of the soft serve machine. I think it probably needs some more time, but we will do a quick test run and hope. <laughs> Before I put it in the cone, I'm actually just going to test it real fast. I'm going to turn this down to open it. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely still super, super runny. So the great thing is I can just pour it back in the machine and keep it going. So that's how you test the soft serve ice cream machine. I'm I'm thinking that this won't be done for another, I'm gonna stay another 15 minutes. I think it's because my kitchen is so warm. Usually it's done a little bit faster than this. So what I'm gonna do is squeeze a little bit out like I just did. And then move this back to the back counter. <laughs> We're not gonna use the ice cream cones today. Use a spoon. <laughs> that strong flavor. This is really strong flavored, by the way. If you want to cut back on the flavoring, I would cut back on the uh, cream soda and the like. I would just do like a tablespoon at a time of cutting back on the reduction. Because right now it calls for the recipe calls for three tablespoons of the cream soda reduction. I would try maybe just doing leaving it out completely it is totally an option. But I feel like it does add. It takes it over the edge to a more butterbeer flavor. So I recommend it. And you can make the cream soda reduction and keep it in the fridge and use it a little bit at a time. And it actually, it would be great on cakes and as a flavoring for a lot of other components as well. Um, and then you can of course cut down on the amount of the butterscotch that you're using as well. It has a, it has a strong flavor, but I like it this way. Like for me, this is what the Butterbeer ice cream at the Universal Studios tasted like. It's easy, it's creamy, and because it's such an easy basic recipe with just the whipping cream and milk and sugar, then really the, it's all about the flavor of the uh, sauce and the um, reduction. Okay, so now I'm gonna get out my finished uh, custard-based one. I am a custard-based ice cream fanatic. What type of machine do you have for ice cream? Um, both of mine are Cuisinart's. This is the Cuisinart soft serve ice cream maker, and this is the Cuisinart frozen yogurt ice cream maker, frozen yogurt ice cream and sorbet maker. So I recommend that one with a double bowl because it's just it's so useful. This is kind of a more of a fun thing to do with the kids in the summer or their own soft serve ice cream machine. Um. All right, so I have some ice cream bowls here. I also have the ice cream bowl that I got at Universal Studios when we were there. All right, so this is the one that I made earlier today. It's been frozen for about four hours, so it's still on the soft dish side. If you uh, leave it in there for more like six to eight, it will get firmer. So 
So it just depends on how firm you like your ice cream. This I feel like is perfection. It's nice and soft, not too firm. Um, I prefer this to like fresh right out of the machine. I feel like fresh right out of the machine, it's just too soft, um, in my opinion. Okay. Oh, wrong camera. There we go. That cute little butterbeer thing. All right. Of course, the more frozen it is, then the more of the sauce you can put on it without getting the ice cream too melty. You're spilling too much. Okay. So because of the custard base to this, it definitely has a richer flavor than the basic one. Um, I feel it's totally worth it. My choice would always be the custard base, but if you're in a hurry and you just want a sweet treat really fast, then that's when I go with the easy one. Um, man, this is so good. <laughs> you guys, this turned out even better than I had hoped or expected. Mm. Oh, it's so good. I've been talking about this recipe for three years, ever since we got back from Universal Studios, and this has met and exceeded all my expectations. I think I have a new favorite ice cream. I debated making some of the cream topping from the Butterbeer drinks on my site and adding that to the ice cream, and I thought, uh, I don't think we need to add one more component to this, but I will probably whip some up right after I get off with you guys. <laughs> and add it to this ice cream because it's I do like I feel like that extra component of the foam just takes it from this is delicious to that over-the-top experience that I like to create with my food but mm, seriously so good all right so I will stay on for just a moment and answer any questions that you guys may have but that is it for uh butterbeer ice cream two different ways again the secret is my butterbeer sauce and the cream soda reduction paired with your favorite vanilla ice cream, right? So could not be easier to make. Seriously, so worth it. So delicious. Hope you guys are enjoying your summer and enjoying ice cream and warm weather and you're not too hot. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you guys next Tuesday, same time, uh, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern time. So it doesn't seem like there are any questions doesn't look like I've missed anything, so I'm going to say goodbye. And Margaret, I will get right on and let you and send you a link to those containers. So, anyway, have a great day, and I will see you next week. <laughs>